Alright, campsite here. Alright, anybody want to talk right now? You're doing fine. Alright. I guess we'll end the day then. We can all use some rest. There we go. Oh, I have the new clothes, but why are they red and yellow? Didn't I... Didn't I dye it purple? That's not purple. That's the opposite of purple. That's red and yellow. Come on. Combine. I wanted to dye this purple. What? Why is it... Oh, so this just dyes it in general and not just necessarily purple. Was it the wrong one? Didn't we buy purple dye? Oh, well. I don't like the color combination, so back to this we go. Because why I said it's the op uh, because why I said it's the opposite is uh, because purple is my favorite color and uh, red and yellow is probably my least favorite color combination, so I Th that was the opposite of what I wanted. Anybody need to talk right now? Exclamation marks over your heads. Like, Laisel had a rough day, but... No, you don't have a have an, exp uh, an exclamation point, so let's go to bed. Nothing. Let's go to bed. Alright, auto-select that. Very nice. Let's do the full rest. There we go. Wonderful. Back out we go. And see what else we can find on this uh, mountain pass. Maybe something less violent and um, undead if possible. Yeah, something, something more um, alive would be nice. But, wait, before we carry on, they probably don't carry much on them, right? What's Maybe... inside? Oh, that's a Salad of the Absolute. Oh, what's that? Heavy armor. I don't think we have anyone proficient with... Wait, is Laisel proficient with heavy armor? Be done. Yeah, you are. Higher armor class. Both have a disadvantage in stealth checks. Okay, let's let's see. Um, inventory. So the one we wear, Githyanki half plate. This is also a Githyanki half plate. So we have two of those. Let's put this on you. Should be a bit hardier. This is five to fourteen, and this was five to fourteen. Okay, that's both fine. Anything else we need from that guy? Let's get going. A missive from, uh, from Moonrise. Shortbow, Halbert, we have those already. Let's take a look at the missive from Moon, uh, from Moon Rise. Duke Ravenguard is to, uh, is to be delivered unharmed or mostly so immediately. Moonrise Towers cannot fulfill its destiny until the Duke has been delivered. Those who succeed will be rewarded. Those who fail will face first my wrath, then Gortash's, then mine again. Uh, General uh, Catherick Thorm. Hells. The Absolute's forces have taken father to Moonrise Towers. Oh yeah, right. That that's unfortunate. What do you have on you? Half plate armor, medium armor. I don't think we have much use for that. Great sword. Yeah, nothing too special. I assume the other one will carry the same thing. What does the gas carry? Nothing. Which. Makes sense. He wasn't wearing anything. Let's go up here first. A dead Githyanki youth. Honeyed ham. Onyx ring and basic poison. Let's take that with us. 
Okay, this looks interesting. What's going on with those? Broken. Need to find another way. Can... Oh yeah, this is all a, chas uh, all a chasm. Not something we can jump to. Alright, let's go down here then. That reunites the paths. Well, let's take the other one first then. Do you carry anything interesting? Another one of those. We have that already. Oh, Potion of Superior Healing. Good thing I didn't miss that. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So you... You had nothing else of note, right? Oh, Silver Ingot. Arrow of Ice and some gold. Okay, good thing we looked at that. Alright, on we go. On we go. Okay, that just reunites the path that we've already seen. We could have accidentally stumbled into this fight way earlier. I mean, obviously, we we took like the fastest way to the monastery. We were free to explore, but like that could have been bad because we were a uh, level lower then, and we still died once this time around. Mm. Huh. What's that? Dirt heap. Dig it up, please. Very good. There's a chest in there. What's in the chest? Scroll of Featherfall, Jade, and Gold. Okay. Walk in the way of dawn, for Lathander cannot protect you where the light doth not reach. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people are being protected here right now. Oh! <laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. May I inquire if perchance you retain among your traveling companions a man who adheres to the given name of Gale? Who's asking? Um, may I inquire who is asking? Should it be the nature of our acquaintance that interests you? Well, you may safely classify Gale and I as friends. Should it be the nature of your present interlocutor that you desire to drag from the dark and unknown, I shall be glad to aid in your quest for illumination and identify myself as Elminster. Elminster Omar. Now, if this answer satisfies you, let us linger no longer in this limbo of indecision, but settle on your knowledge of the individual I seek. Hmm. We could say... No, I hope he doesn't walk away if we say... Wait, why is Gale here? Gale's right here. Uh, is, is, is that a bug? That's weird. Uh, he wasn't in my party right now, so, um... Hmm, this could be a massive, like, trap to just... Do we just say no, go to camp, talk to Gale about this guy, and then return? Hmm, even though I suspect your denial soils rather than sustains the splendid dominion that is the truth, I shall take your answer Ah, okay, no, he's gonna leave now. And with it, take my leave as well. Adieu. Wait, quickly go to camp. See if Gale knows who this guy is. But I, I don't really, you know, I don't really like going behind people's backs like that. A moment for the two of us. Not the resounding success we were hoping for. Still, the price of ambition is occasionally catastrophic failure. At least our skulls remain intact. Uh, can I not talk to you about the guy who claimed to be your friend? Uh, okay, Laisel, you can stay here. I'm gonna bring Gale with me. I mean, the, the um, wizard is probably gone. But if he's still here, we can talk to him again. 
To the Inquisitor at the crash. The Zathisk's failure must be reported. Oh. Okay, you want to do that. Um. Oh yeah, a hatchery with a single egg. How many does a clutch usually contain? Kalir's clutch held three dozen eggs, more or less. Though I've learned of crashes that harbored a hundred. Uh, Githyanki looked quite humanoid. How did you evolve to lay eggs? Humanoid. How I despise the term. Githyanki are quite superior to humans. Our biology slates state that Githyanki came to lay eggs after we escaped a lithid enslavement and took to the astral plane. It's an asexual process. A favorable change by any estimation. Hideous to imagine a life where I couldn't partake in the pleasures of sex without the looming threat of bearing children. Uh, who does the laying? I'm curious about the logistics. Uh, let, let's go on to... Or should we... Eh, screw it. Shukiani. Let's screw it. Let's Githyanki do it. Githyanki chosen by Vlakith herself to bear young. The queen assigns when and where they must lay and how many eggs they must bear. The Shukiani pass their eggs in the material plane. In the astral, time barely passes. It is a meticulous process, carefully timed so that the eggs hatch at once. On to other mothers on, then. then. Um, the crash training room was illuminating. A gith instructor's always so brutal. My own Savage would never have threatened a youngling. A waste of time and energy. The pupils themselves culled the weak from their ranks. I myself felled four of my own classmates once Kalir had a hundred times circled to Rill. Um, that's awful. Is life not precious to the Githyanki? Uh, for what reason? Rage? Entertainment? Um, I mean, I think she was pretty upfront about it, you know, getting rid of the weak ones. Uh, I'm still gonna ask. Survival. My people have no use for cowards. Every trainee that I slayed was either too weak to withstand the lessons, or was cocky enough to pick a fight they could never win. They underestimated me, so they paid the price. The Githyanki are only as powerful as their weakest warrior. Jaquith de Venzir, the termination of the frail, strengthens us. Mm, don't like that. Don't like that at all. Um, let's say you wait for me in camp. Chuck, you believe you can survive without me? I'm not arguing. As you say, do not keep me waiting. If we go back to the crash, we might. You know, since she said we should talk to, uh, we should talk to the uh, what was it, the one guy, or. The one person again. I might do that, and we might bring her with us for that. But for now, no, come on. How much farther can I go? Just talk to Gail, please. Tell me, what can I do for you? Yeah, join me. With pleasure. Lead I think on. there's a couple levels we are gonna have to give you. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Let's level you up. Bring you. Up to the level of us. Let's see. I think his leveling was relatively complex, so let's see. Wizard level 5, health increased, class feature, gain 2 spells. Okay, what do we have here? Bestow curse, animate dead, counter spell. Counter spell is kind of cool. Oh, you can have fireball as well, huh? Could we just, you know, fireball from various separate angles? We could do magic missile as well. Melf's acid arrow. Hypnotic pattern. Lightning bolt. 8d6s of lightning damage. On save, targets still take half damage. Sounds good. Uh, prepare spells. Ah, there they are. Okay. Oh, 
right yeah let's get rid of some thunder wave witch bolt hmm I guess I never really used Grease. Let's take that. Witch Bolt, Chromatic Orb, Sleep. You know, that amount of hit points is exceeded very, very quickly at this point. Let's do this then. There we go. Level up, Wizard level 6, health increased. Subclass feature, what's that? A potent cantrip. Your cantrips become harder to evade entirely. When a creature succeeds its saving throw against one of your cantrips, it still takes half the cantrip's damage, but suffers no additional effects. Okay, spells. Now what do we have here? Vampiric touch. Detect thought. What else is there? What else that's interesting? Sleet storm. Call forth a storm that disrupts the concentration of spellcasters, uh, douses fires and creates an icy surface. Well, that's interesting. We can make use of that, I'm sure. Remove curse. Protection from energy. Touch a creature to grant it resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning or thunder damage. Haste. Target yourself or an ally to become hastened. Gain an action. Become faster and gain plus two armor class. When the condition ends, become lethargic. Okay, lethargic is what exactly? Uh, can't move or take actions. Bonus actions or reactions. Oh, I don't like the lethargy thing. I hope it doesn't last long, but... Hmm, is that worth it? Arcane lock. Close a door or containers with a magical lock. It can no longer be lockpicked or opened with knock. Blur. Disadvantage on attack rolls. That could be nice. Just a, ni a nice little passive thing. Or we could try hold person. Grant flight. You know what? Let's let's take blur. That seems interesting enough. Mm, we. No wait. No no. Uh, what did we remove here? Mage armor, I think. Okay, one second. Sorry, I had to cough there. You know what? Actually, Witch Bolt might be a bit pointless at that point. Uh, let's take this. Alright, accept that. Let's leave camp. Is the wizard still there? Do you feel that? He's probably gone, Darkness. right? Pulling at the strands of the weave. You'll still be able to do your wizard thing, though, right? Of course. That doesn't make the shadows less dead. <laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. I think some proper introductions are in order. Uh, where do you hail from? Um, hit that country road, old man. Um, I think some proper introduction, uh, introductions are in order. Meet Elminster Ormar. A good friend of mine, but rather more significantly, he's the most famed and respected wizard in the realms. Am I, indeed? Most famed and respected errand boy, more like. I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gail. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get... 
get out with it. Um, yes, Gail, where is your decorum? I suppose we could part with a few of our rations. Um, I'm not in the habit of taking in vagabonds. I mean, that's just a blatant lie. I suppose we could part with a few of our rations. And a great kindness that would be. See, Gail? Even in these barren parts, the art of hospitality begets inspired new works. If only one keeps up the practice. Oh, for the love of... Uh, this way, then. Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh, nigh on 13 centuries old and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow. And see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. Uh, very well. I suppose I'm as curious as you are uh, as you are to hear what he has to say. We'll meet him in camp later. Let him have his rest and uh, repast in the meantime. Let's just wise choice. Do that. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. Let's see what he has to say now. Mm, yes, what a <clears throat> delightful. Wedge of old Elthurian that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Right. Um, you see, I, um, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message... And the charge I bring you are hers. Uh, you were sent here as an actual divine messenger. I'm surprised she sent you in the first place after Gale's debacle. What message and what charge would that be? Uh, speak fast then, for none of this pertains to me. Um, you were sent here as an actual divine messenger? Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, <clears throat> you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the Absolute, that most insidious of evils. If the Goddess herself is aware, I wouldn't say no to some divine intervention. If even the Gods know, why are we facing these threats alone? Uh, you wouldn't happen to know of a cure, would you? Some all-powerful parasite withering spell, perhaps? Um, I wouldn't say no to some divine intervention there. The very purpose of my presence. In a roundabout sort of way. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave. The very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gail, with its destruction. It is Mistress belief that only you can. Gail alone? How so? Mistress mistaken? I will be the Absolute's destroyer. Hogwash, idle beliefs in false, uh, false hopes. I'm just gonna ask. Gail alone? How so? The Orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power 
to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help, or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. Uh, that's monstrous. Uh, you're tasking him to kill himself. Um, say what you will, but you can't force Gale to go through with this. We'll be uh, rid of both the Absolute and Gale in one, in one fell swoop. Win-win. Um, you're tasking Gale to kill himself, yeah. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My Nahastra Mistra Ariel Italian Ras Anas Ditra. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you. To shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. Uh, on my honor, it shall be done. Uh, there's still a long journey ahead. We'll find another way. I'm not his keeper, and I do not accept your charge. Um, it shall be done. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas. So too, the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. Okay, then. Gail wants to talk. Uh, repairing the weave. Achievement unlocked. Okay. Always at your side. Let's talk to him about it. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. I'd always imagined Elminster to be more imposing. An old man with a craving for cheese. Hardly the great wizard of legend. Uh, he didn't seem much a friend showing up and demanding you kill yourself. Actually, I was hoping to talk about something else. Uh, he's... I mean, he looked like the most wizardly wizard ever because, I mean, he, he, he basically looks like Gandalf in red clothes, so uh, the most wizardly wizard ever. But, uh, yeah, and Gandalf himself was also sometimes kind of, you know, jovial and uh, goofy. So, yeah, uh, I always imagined Elminster to be more imposing. The doddering act is merely an illusion, one he's most adept at maintaining. Elminster is the most formidable wizard in the realms, perhaps in existence. For Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age, a year is a lifetime. 
It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. <clears throat> um, you're seriously considering doing what Elminster said? Of course. You offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. Uh, I don't understand. Can Mistra, uh, can't Mistra just destroy the absolute or Elminster himself? So that's it. Uh, you're on a suicide mission now. Uh, there's surely another way. What about me? Am I safe around you? Um, there's surely another way. If there was, I'm sure the goddess of magic and the greatest wizard who ever lived would have identified it. But alas, only one solution is offered. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Um, I'll make sure we find it, Gale. Then I suppose there is nothing more to be done but find the heart of the Absolute and stop its beating. I think we're still a long way away from that. Uh, but I guess we'll see. Uh, and now let's head back to the road.